Hello, welcome to Anxious Griffith's occasion series in MATLAB tutorials. Today we'll be looking at uh, object tracking in video. And I'm just starting at the beginning. And the original idea came from line 13 from a Stanford homework. Uh, and then on lines 15 and 16, Steve Evans uh, uh, did it again. Uh, but this time he would do it on how to set up your webcam in MATLAB so that you could get the image. They're both doing uh, a ball moving like a pendulum and they're just doing object tracking. Now this would be fairly simple in that the background is steady and there's only the foreground object of the ball that's moving so it's a little trivial but still you get the idea. So I've put in a couple of breakpoints here and I'm not going to go through this line by line so it's fairly long but you'll see the code there and also you can get the code online. So I'm just going to uh, get the, run the program here. And nothing's happening because that's because the breakpoint. So as you know F5 will do the breakpoint. And now we'll just see the ball moving here. And we have the pendulum, and you know, there's a static background, so this is about as simple as you get. Okay, and now on 937, I'm going to show frame 75 to 90 of the 500 frames that I've read in. So F5 continues. And there they are. Now the reason I displayed these uh, frames is that uh, the first way of doing it, you know, where we're just going to do frame 500 minus frame 499, frame 499 minus 498 is that uh, we run into a bit of trouble and the reason we run into a bit of trouble is that at the end you know at the at the end of the arc the ball is moving very slowly <coughs> and if the ball is moving very slowly in effect we're subtracting the same frame from each other so when we're trying to get the difference between the two frames we get large errors and the reason I just show these because say any of those frames just where the mouse is pointing now and the next one they're basically the same frame so when you uh, subtract them in grayscale you're really saying you know the same frame minus the same frame so you're getting very little difference so and then when you try and f locate the object you there'll be a bit of noise in the image and that will just cause mayhem. You'll see this in a plot later on. Okay, so we've done that. I've plotted them. And then on this line here, 92 to 94, I'm getting the differences. And a common MATLAB trick is to, uh, on line 92, is to work from 500 back or frame last back to frame one. <coughs> Speed things up and I am to BW absolute differences. So I'm getting the frame differences and I'm using a suitable threshold value for each particular frame. And then here uh, I'm getting the largest, uh, I'm getting the, the difference and I'm plotting that. I'm using BW label to plot um, the differences there. So let's have a little look. So and there, that's the hundred difference frame. So you can you can get some idea of what's going on. Okay, uh, and coming up again, just carry on here. Just have to wait a second. You may see in the bottom of the screen over here we're busy. Oh, I just have to wait a sec. And yeah, that looks wrong, but it's just we have to carry on. Sorry about the delay. And okay, sorry, just find it now a sec. So that's we use the centroids to plot. And you can see here that the X is 
reasonably all right but um the top ones here uh, it's following the various sign pattern but then when we reach the end that's in other words the montage of frames that i was showing before at the end of the arc there's a lot of noise and the location goes horribly wrong so you can, so by right just where the mouse is that should be smooth rather than that sudden spike in the y you'll see when we plot the centroids of the frame differences over the original uh, we get a uh, quite an error so we just carry on again so we have the original image and then i got the centroids of the absolute difference and i put that that's the yellow and i put that on the original so you can see it's all right where the pendulum ball is moving reasonably quickly but at the end where it slows down we're getting a lot of error Yeah, we're still busy. Okay, F five continues. We might just have a look at the code in the meantime. So now so we've just stopped on line two eighteen, okay. So, okay, so we've done that, we've plotted the positions, and we just carry on again. You see things are fairly slow and I'm running a uh, dual core. Uh, so now, so we have there, so that's, just go back to the code there. So we've just plotted that there. And we've plotted the location of each ball. Okay, we carry on. No. So we did the first method just to go back here. Sorry, sorry about this. The first method uh, was the frame differences, and then I skipped a little bit. We want a different method, and we've seen some of that already. Uh, if I can get my mouse to work. So we just. So we want to do 225, I've gone by it by accident, a different method. So what we like to do is subtract the background uh, from the image. So uh, again, lines 226 to 236 is the Stanford way of describing it. And lines 238 to lines 246 is the MATLAB way of describing it. And on lines 247, 248, and 249, you'd have to put that into a text editor, but that would be the uh, the MATLAB description. Again, I just want to give full credit that I don't want to take credit for any work at all done. So, what we want to, how do we how do we get the background? Well, we we get the differences as before, and then. Sorry, I missed a little bit. Oh, yeah. So we, apologies. So we estimated the background by using an IM delete uh, across 
well you can say across five frames or ten frames so in the MATLAB one they suggest five this suggests ten you could play with it yourself so we use you can get the background by using I am delete gray object is the is the size by 500 it's the 500 uh, frames stacked on top of each other and we're dilating across uh, 10 frames a 1 by 1 by 10 and that'll give us the background for each frame I have to go back in time here a little bit so then we get the difference on line 188199 we get the difference between each frame and the background frame and then on line there we get the centroids that would be the largest difference we assume that the largest difference would be the ball we get the centroid of that and we plot that and I have to find figure 8 now just one sec and there's figure 8 and you can see figure 8 is much better than just so, so I can just so I do a compare and contrast sorry okay there's uh, figure 8 and 9 so there's the location and if you remember the graph before uh, for the original one remember there was a lot of jumps around here that was when we were getting to the end of the arc you know there was a lot of noise so we've eliminated that uh, we saw that just to remind you here a lot of errors there so this is a considerable improvement over this one uh, yeah that's grand so we're just there and then if we just plot the second method which is you know estimating the background and subtracting we still get errors but the errors aren't as bad as we got before I suppose I could have written a bit of code to work out the percentage errors for the two methods, but I didn't. Okay, <coughs> that's it. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks, bye-bye.